Okay, so we're moving to electron configurations. Okay, so this is where the real work actually starts. Electron configurations, you should be able to learn, you should be able to write electron configurations. So before we write electron configurations, um, you just need to know that that subshells uh, S, P, D, and F, these are the number of orbitals that they have. So when you think about, in your head, when you think about orbitals, I want you to think about space, okay? Think about space. So the P, there are, the P has three orbitals, right? Remember when we did this previously, there was one shape that goes like this, there's one shape that goes like this, and another one that goes like this, okay? So these are the P's, there are three of them. In each one of these spaces, in each one of these spaces that I'm drawing here, okay, in each one of these spaces, there can be two electrons, right? There can be two electrons in this space. So in every space that you're seeing here, in every space that you're seeing here, there are actually two electrons, okay? There could be one here, there could be one here, but whatever it is, there are two electrons. That's basically what it means. And then the S, remember, it was supposed to be a circle. In that circle space, there can be two electrons. So in this space, in this space, somewhere in this space, there are two electrons, okay? Somewhere in this this pink space here, there are two electrons. Both of them could be here, or one could be here, one could be here, or maybe one could be here, one could be there. Some, that, that's basically what it means, right? That's basically what it means. So the electrons can be anywhere. And then the Ds, if you remember, the Ds were like this, there are so many of them, okay? So... In the Ds, uh, electrons can like maybe be here, there. It could be, it could be here, or it could be there. It could be there. You know, th that's basically what it is. So there are five Ds. So you don't need to know in those kind of details. So there are five Ds. Okay. So each each orbital, each space can hold two electrons. So there are five five spaces. Five spaces. Each space can hold maximum two electrons. So total is ten. Okay, in the case of P just now, there are three spaces, okay, three spaces, which means that each space can hold two electrons, so total will be six. And finally, S is only one. Meanwhile, F, uh, there are seven spaces, seven spaces, and that can hold a total of 14 electrons, okay? That's all you need to know at the moment, right? That's all you need to know at the moment, all right? Okay, so let's move on. So the Achbaus principle, you see, apparently um, the energy levels in an atom are being measured they are being measured from the lowest energy to the highest energy so for us it's just easy we just need to know this now if we arrange all of the orbitals all of the orbitals in energy sequence this is how they will look the 1s will have the lowest energy okay 1s will have the lowest energy then followed by the 2s and then the two and then the three p's you know the re reason why you're seeing three boxes is because if you remember just now px py pz you remember it's something like this uh, then it's like this and then the other one was like say something like this so this is what the boxes represent okay that's what they're representing so this is the energy sequence that we need to know okay we need to know this the energy sequence so electrons are filled into the orbitals by energy sequence starting from the lowest energy then moving to the highest en energy now if you want to memorize this there is a way of doing this if you want to memorize this table right there's a way of doing this okay so um okay so let's do this so let's say we start with 1s okay let's do this okay let's look at 1s then you put 2s then you put 2 uh, what am i saying then you put 3s 4 5 6 and 7 okay then you put 2p 3p 4p 5p 6p 7p then you put 3d 4d 5d 6d 7d 4f 5f 6f 7f okay we stop that huh? so let's say you're asked to write electron configurations right and then suddenly you realize oops i don't know how to do this right and you realize you don't know how to do this so what you, you what you can do is you start in this first you start with this so this will be number one you start with this then you go this way that will be number two okay 
then you go this direction this will be number three so this is this is basically uh, number one this is number two this is number three this is number four and then you go in this direction this will be number five this will be number six okay and then you go in this direction this will be number seven this will be number eight this will be number nine and then you go in this direction here this would be 10 this will be 11 this will be 12 and then you can go in this direction oops like this then that's 13 this is 14 this is 15 this is 16 so that you can just go on like that okay that will help you so that is the sequence that when we write electron configurations we must start with the lowest energy and then we move on to the highest energy so this will help you with the sequencing so um okay and then we come to okay let's let, let's write some electron compound then i'll explain this to you okay then i'll explain this to you so let's look at this okay so i'm going to erase this page here erase this page okay let's say let's say we want to write the electron configuration for i think the color doesn't suit very well let's say we want to write the electron configuration for okay for sodium okay let's say sodium right so we know sodium is 11 so 11 11 protons sodium has 11 protons which means that it also has 11 electrons so let's start writing electron configuration so we start with the lowest energy first so when we start the lowest energy first what we'll do is we'll put one arrow pointing upwards and one arrow pointing downwards now i want to explain to you what this arrow pointing upwards and arrow pointing downwards is it's not important but let me just explain this to you apparently electrons apparently electrons they are spinning in space so they are either spinning clockwise or anti-clockwise so they're either going anti-clockwise or clockwise right so that's what they're doing so the arrow so let's say like this is anti-clockwise we might say okay arrow downwards this is clockwise we will say arrow upwards so the arrow up and arrow down basically refers to the spinning of the electron whether it's spinning clockwise or anti-clockwise that that's what it is okay so every box that you're seeing here is an orbital it's an orbital so each orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons okay now so so if we go to the next level next lowest energy is this so up and down then so now we come to this subshell okay we come to a p subshell p subshell has three orbitals okay it has three orbitals so all these three that you're seeing here all three have the same amount of energy when we come to a subshell which has a few orbitals like p's d's and f's what we need to do is we have to follow the hans rule this is what it is here we need to follow the hans rule according to the hans rule when you have um when you have electrons when you put them into a, a subshell which has a few orbitals what you're supposed to do them do is you're supposed to put them singularly first like this before you start pairing them up you see like in the case of nitrogen here right nitrogen should be written as one arrow up arrow up up but in this example here you see you have written here one up one down and then one up so this this is empty can you see this this is empty so this cannot be you cannot allow an orbital to be empty if an orbital is part of a same um, subshell it has to be filled up as well so back to this again back to this again so now we out of 11 electrons we have already used up four all right so then we what we do is we just put one arrow up here arrow up here arrow up here and then i think we still have enough four more arrow down arrow down arrow down and then we come to last one here last electron i put arrow up line. okay you want to put it down it's up to you so this is the electron configuration for sodium and when we actually write it right it will look like this it will look like this one s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 that's it that's the electron configuration for sodium when you were in high school this is what you were actually thought two eight oops i made a mistake here i made a mistake here um three four 
three S one, right? Uh, so you were taught this in high school, then this becomes one. Okay, this becomes one. So that is why it is two, eight, and one. Okay, that's what it means. So let's write the electron configuration for something which is a little bit more uh, has a little bit more electrons. Okay, let's let's do this again. So let's say we write the electron configuration for something which has um, let's say thirty protons. Thirty protons. It has thirty protons. It means that it has thirty electrons. Okay. So let's write this. So we're gonna start with the lowest energy first. Up, down. Okay. Up, down. Up, up, up. Down, down, down. Up, down. Up, up, up. Down, down, down. And then change color here. Up, down. Okay. So uh, up to now, I think I have used up 20 maybe. 20. So let's go up, up, up. Okay, and then down, down. Hmm. Oh, sorry, four S. My mistake. Sorry. Three uh, D has lower energy than the four S, right? Sorry, three uh, D has lower energy than the four P. My mistake. So now we after four S. Okay, so up to here we have already filled up uh, twenty electrons, I think. After four S, then we have got to fill this up. This is 18, 19, 20. Yep, okay, let's go. So up, 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 down, 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 down. Ta da! Oh, it's already 30. Okay, it's already 30. So it's complete. This is zinc. All right, this is zinc. Zinc has 30 protons. So this is the electron configuration for zinc. So zinc's electron configuration will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, and 3d10. That's the electron configuration for zinc. Okay, that's how we do this. So this is how we write electron configurations for various elements by writing them from the lowest energy and then moving on to the highest energy right that's how we write it so that's basically uh, electron configurations for you how we write electron configurations right now there are some exceptions to writing electron configuration all right so one of it is in this case here chromium and copper if you follow the sequencing that I just told you just now, you for chromium you might end up writing for chromium you may end up writing it like this: one s two, two s two, two p six, three s two, three p six, four s two, three d four. This is what you may end up writing, and then for copper you may end up writing one s two, two s two. 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d9. This is what you may end up writing for copper. For these two cases, for these two cases only, the electron configuration is actually written like this. That means what happens is this one, this and this, is actually written like this 4s1 3d5 and then in this case it is written has it is written has 4s1 3d10 that's how it's written this is an exception to the rule okay you need to know this you need to know this this is an exception to the rule all right then um, we come to electron configurations for anions and cations all right so what we'll do is this this part the anions and cations what I'll do is I will explain it in a separate video for you in a separate video the next video right and then this one uh, excited states okay this one I can explain to you so sometimes electron configurations are given to you uh, like let's look at this electron configuration here okay if you look at this one you will notice that something is not right about it right it's supposed to be 1s2 2s2 2p6 hmm supposed to be 3s6 
one. Okay, supposed to be three s one, but now suddenly what is given to you is three p. All right. So this basically this this represents an excited state. Okay, this represents an excited state. That's that's what it is. It is an excited state. So when an electron configuration is given to you, is given to you, and it's not not following the sequence of the uh, from the lowest energy to the highest energy, it basically means that that electron configuration which has been given to you is in the excited state. That's basically what it means. Okay, so you you have to count back the number of electrons. Okay, you count the electrons back again. Okay, count count all of this and then rewrite the electron configuration. Then you will get the ground state. So so for this electron configuration just now, this is the this is the ground state. Okay, this is the ground state. That means the lowest energy state. This is excited state. All right. So next video, what I'll do is I'll show you how to identify groups uh, in the periodic table, as well as how to write the ions for various elements. Okay. So we'll do that in the next video.